Hey, this is Brian Jackson, Ableton Certified Trainer from Brooklyn, New York, and author of the Music Producers Survival Guide, Chaos, Creativity, and Career in Independent and Electronic Music. I offer private lessons, coaching, consulting, and mastering services. Check the description for more info. Let's look at how to set up live so you can easily learn to analyze and copy any drum pattern that you want to know how to program. So I'm just going to be using a stock loop that comes with the Beat Tools Live Pack, but you can use any drum loop that comes with any sample pack, any live pack, um, and you can even grab uh, loops from full songs if you want to figure out pieces from songs. Uh, for this, I'm going to show you how to set this up so that the clip view lines up with the clips on the timeline. And there's a little trick to this. It's not as easy as one might think. So let's set this up from scratch. And just to point out, the goal here is not to copy the sounds, it's to learn how to analyze and copy the drum pattern. So I'm going to make sure I have my loop here and the loop brace is set to two bars, the length of this clip. And then all I'm gonna do is select this amount of time and then you can use a key command or you can just right click and choose insert empty MIDI clip. And you'll see here I have a two bar clip, but I can't size it the way I want. So it lines up with what we're looking at here in the timeline. Easy fix. I'm just gonna set the loop length over here on the left to three bars. Just double click to create a MIDI note over here. Doesn't really matter which one it is. And then I'm gonna go back over here and set this to two bars. And now we can size this however we want. The first step is going to be to figure out what grids we're gonna be working with. Up here in the arrangement view on the timeline, we can see it's set to eighth note. And just by looking, I can obviously tell that there's a lot of notes and detail happening in between the eighth notes. And then of course the clip view defaults to 16th notes when you make a new empty MIDI clip. So let's start by changing our grid up here. Now, of course, there are the key commands. On Windows, this would just be Control, uh, Command 1, Command 2, and Command 3 to go into triplet grid, which we will use at the end. Uh, you can also just right click. And for right now, I'm just gonna go to 16th notes. And I can see even here at the beginning in these hi-hats, there's something falling in between these. It looks to be exactly in the middle. But over here, I suspect this isn't exactly 30 second notes and those are gonna be triplets. So we're gonna look at that. So the easiest way to start is just doing your kick and snares. Get kind of the foundation, the framework of the beat in place, and then you go back in and figure out the detail. And of course, I'm doing a fairly simple beat in the sense that it only has kick, snare, hats. Uh, other beats can have a lot more going on. And there are two different hi-hat sounds in here, but I'm not gonna worry about copying the sounds, only going to be copying the pattern. Let's press B to go into draw mode. And what I'm gonna do is have both of these playing right now. So I'll enable track one, and then I can even see like where the kicks are right now. So notice that because I did this little trick here to get this to line up, I can just look right above it and let's give this a listen. And I'm just going ahead and putting these in. Of course, I can turn off the note preview if I don't want to hear it while I pencil it in. And then the snares are pretty easy on this one. We can see they're nice and loud. And I'm just going to use this snare here. So this, again, the sounds are not matching. The goal here is not to match the sounds. So some of the hi-hats are isolated, so we can see those. But one of the good things about doing this kind of exercise is you also have to learn to listen when sounds happen at the same time. So let's see where are their hi-hats that are not obviously isolated that might be happening while something else is happening. So it's happening on top of all the kicks as well. And actually I'm gonna turn the preview back on here for a second and let's find a hi-hat that's, oop, got to solo this one too. Let's see if this is a good one. So I'm just gonna use that one right now for right now. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and solo this out. And I'm just gonna put one of these right on top of all the kicks. And then if for some reason I'm wrong about that, uh, we can go back in and change them. So let's hear both of these now. And then let's start going in here and getting some of these details. So I obviously see one here and I obviously see one here. The advantage of doing it this way is I can see right away if I'm in the wrong spot. And because I just made this note, it's still selected. I could press the right arrow and put it in place. And then same thing. I went a little bit too far to the left there. Let's go ahead and I think there's all four here. Let's see if that's correct. Yeah, so it sounds like there's five in a row here. There's one at the end here. There's one here. Have one here. Got one here. So let's figure out these ones where they're closer together. Let's start at the beginning. And to do this, I'm gonna set the grid to 30 second note. You can do it again with a right click or we can press command one. Uh, control one on Windows to make it smaller and let's see if I get this one right Looks like I'm missing one here Let's do this. Let's see if that sounds right That seems a little better So now let's figure out what's going on here at the end. And for this, I am going to hit command three. Command four turns the grid off, command three. And then it still looks like the grid's too big. Let's do command one. And now it looks like these are all on a grid. So let's go back down here. And sometimes live will just wanna resize things for you. And then I'm gonna go ahead, delete this one out. Actually, I'll leave that there. And then let's see if this is correct. Looks like I did that on the wrong grid size. And we get that feedback right away. Because, yep, I didn't go to triplet mode. So command Z, command Z, command 3. To go into triplet mode. And let's hear that. So there you go. That is a good technique for starting to learn how to analyze and copy specific drum patterns. One last little tip is while you don't need a kit that is exactly the same sounds, you do want ones that are close enough so it doesn't distract you from the rhythms. So that's also why I picked a fairly simple kit in terms of the timbres. So all you have to do is set it up this way. Use your eyes, use your ears listen to where drums are happening at the same time. And then after you've practiced this enough, you'll no longer have to do this kind of analysis when you want to program in a drum beat that matches what you're hearing in your head. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe.